Welcome to Joan of Art, the weekly podcast where we investigate and celebrate people who make art. Oh my God, I never get tired of that song. I just want to get up and dance. I want to jump on the table, but I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> because I am going to have a really awesome conversation today with two artists who are here. So I just want to say, before I even introduce my guests to you today, Joan of Art podcast listeners, we have had the great luxury of interviewing a lot of artists here on the podcast, mostly Twin Cities based, with the exception of the Gorilla Girls, which mm -hmm. was kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. But today, we have two artists who are, quote unquote, Outstate. <laughs> That's what I call outstate. Okay. Okay. So I am sitting with Dana Sicola and Michael Samino from Mankato. Mankato in the house. Woo woo. Thank you for joining me on the Joan of Art podcast, you guys. Thanks for making the drive. Did you have a nice drive? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's just due south of Minneapolis, so it's right up 169, you know? You're like, I'm not so far away, damn it. Well, like, <laughs> I mean, everything's We're been, used to it. Yeah, and everything's been harvested now, so the drive is just like just flat, barren land. But, oh, you know, it's, so you it's, can't it's, measure the season by the corn height, Not anymore. Right? It's no, gone not now. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But you know what? It's I, I'm really excited that you guys are actually a vibrant part of the Twin Cities art scene, and mm -hmm. you're you're both doing a lot of stuff, and it, and I am going to do a little... I mean, we're going to do a lot of storytelling actually so put on your seatbelts Joan of Art podcast oh no 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 it's okay <laughs> okay so I put out a call on Facebook last week some point I don't remember last week was a blur but um I said I wanted a production assistant for this podcast and you guys both were like hey I would like to help you with that like mm -hmm. that would be really cool and I was like but you live too far away <laughs> but then I thought about it I was like if you guys are interested in helping with the podcast I bet you would be interested in being guests on the podcast right of course yeah definitely and you both were like hell yeah <laughs> like one wheel you know and what I I did not know that you guys have been friends mm -hmm. and that you guys have this like history with mm -hmm. each other had no idea oh yeah <laughs> none <laughs> weird right yeah it was Super so weird. weird well i didn't even know until she posted about it on facebook that she was coming up and i'm like wait <laughs> is that the same day and i like checked the day i'm like oh yeah like i'm gonna be on at the same time like this is <laughs> yeah, this it was is really so random. perfect yeah <laughs> All right, so we're so we're gonna we're gonna talk together, but mm -hmm. I am gonna turn my gaze to you, Dana, because I want to find out more about you. So, so I'm gonna say like the first time that I ever saw your work, it was in Macy's, and it was like this beautiful pastel paper cutouts mm -hmm. of birds, mm -hmm. and it was an installation, mm -hmm. and I was like, ooh, that's super beautiful. And how the hell did she get her shit into Macy's? Basically, I say that same thing. Well, now. what <laughs> happened? And then I also I was like, oh, she'll never want to work with me and then here we're working together now mm -hmm. you're in the next run of made here Whoa. I know well, I'm super I, I install on uh Friday yeah we're gonna have a nice time so it'll I'm be super like, fun are you ready gotta get, well no <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of stuff when you are neither working, am yeah, I it's so like good. it'll come Friday morning and I'll have it all good to go <laughs> so tell me how the hell did you get your work in Macy's what happened um, well, it kind of started when I first got the emails from them. I actually thought it was like a spam. <laughs> uh, was it from an email from Macy's? Yeah, it was from an events coordinator that oh. works with Macy's out of Chicago. Uh huh. That was planning it because the installation that I did was in part with their annual flower show yeah. that they have on the eighth floor that they make into this big crazy thing. But this last January, I was in the Minnesota Monthly magazine as one of the top seven up-and-coming artists under the age of 30 in Minnesota. Uh, and yeah. so I, they must have, I know, right? Again, I got really? that. Really? Yeah. Like, oh my God, you're, you're touched, girl. Yeah, my okay. mom's like, what? No, it's um, good. So oh. Macy saw me in there, and then they had contacted me about doing an installation as more of like an advertisement for their event going on upstairs, and it was right on the Skyway. So it was super public, and I'm like, I'm totally into this. Let's do it. And it was kind of awkward putting up your work in a 
It was like the department men's, store, the men's clothing <sighs> section, and they they could only take away so much merchandise because they didn't. Oh, like, and you were, were you trying to go bigger than what they the space they had available for you? Yeah, because at first they're like, oh, well, whatever you need, whatever you need, and I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do, and they're like. No. I mean, like, I want, I want the whole entire floor <laughs> to be w- gutted and white out. Yeah, like, you gotta <laughs> put holes in the walls and stuff. But. No, but I actually was pretty substantial, though. Yeah, no, like, I was, I was really happy with it, and everyone, I've never worked with a, a big business like that. Did um, they pay you? No, they did not <gasps> pay me. But they did a shame l- on you, Macy's. I know, I know. But they did a lot of. Well, they pulled like the whole. Um, Oh, but we're marketing your name. Oh, and they, do they that pull that stuff. Deal. But I will say that's a pretty big. Um, no, I mean I would have done it too. Yeah. I would have done it too. But anyway, we won't go down that rabbit mm-hmm. hole because I'll just be annoying and go <laughs> all crazy. So, <laughs> um, but okay, let's back up. So mm-hmm. anyway, I saw that Macy's d- mm-hmm. installation and I was like, "Who is this?" And oh my god, I thought it was really lovely. And oh, I was and you. I was also like just really perplexed, like, "What the fuck is this beautiful artwork doing?" Yeah, here? it was kind of random. Yeah, it was super random, which mm-hmm. I love. Mm-hmm. It's the best, especially on the Skyway. You know, your work's going on the Skyway too. So yep, like here you go again. Anyway, um, let's back up. So, are, were you born and raised in Mankato? I was born and raised in Litchfield, Minnesota, which is a... I've heard of it. Yeah, it's a pretty small town. It's like population 6,000. Yeah. <laughs> and I ended up moving to uh, Mankato to do my undergrad at Mankato State University mm-hmm. in 2004, and I've just... What were you studying? Um, originally, I was in uh, set design within the theater, <gasps> which is funny because now it's kind of come back around. But um, in my first two years there, I realized I worked... I don't work as well in groups of people. I'm more of like a Mm -hmm. solo worker when it comes to that stuff. So then I transferred over to the art department and I kind of just got hooked. Yeah. And then I did my master's there. Whoa. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Dang. You kids. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh. So you got your master's? Yep. So I have a a master's of art and I'm finishing this semester my certificate in nonprofit leadership because (gasps) um, arts administration is my main background. Oh my God. Okay. We are so like you have so much schooling and I have none. (laughs) Like, like, so. Isn't that bizarre, <laughs> though? Like, <laughs> the fact that, like, I'm administrating a project that has, like, 60 artists in it. Never knew how to... No one told me anything. I, just, but I think a lot <laughs> of it just comes from, like, professional practice. And yeah. You don't, like, you don't necessarily need to take classes and that stuff. But, but maybe was, you But maybe you could teach me something. I don't know. Like, I, I'm not thinking that I don't have stuff to learn. I'm just curious. Like, wow, a master's degree in that. Like, mm-hmm. h- how does that translate into the real world? Well, at first it was... I got out of graduate school and, you know, you look on, people look on your resume and it's like, okay, you're an artist, but I was applying for arts administration. Um, and so a lot of times people who are hiring are more interested in people with business backgrounds because yeah, that's because kind of, and no one cares about anything but money. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so they're like, oh, well, it doesn't look like you have any experience, which I do with running the gallery space that I run in Mankato, which we're going to talk about. Um, but it just, I just kept getting shut down because it, they're like, oh, well, no. Yeah, we want a lawyer to make yeah. our art. We want someone with a business degree to run an art organization. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, no, but I, I mean, in a way, though, also, honestly, I do get it. Like, mm-hmm. you know what? Like, there, you know, sustainability and, and profits and revenue and all that stuff, it's a real thing. I mean, oh, it's, it's huge. A bit, I mean, I'm, I, we won't go into this, but look at this soap factory is going through some serious <laughs> shit right now, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you need good leaders who know how to keep the ship afloat yep. financially. Like, I'm not claiming to be that person at mm-hmm. all, but yeah. like it, I know that it's a skill and I employ it when I need to and mm-hmm. have been really lucky. But, you know, yeah, I can see how yeah. like it, to lead, you have to know how to make money. Yeah. And a lot of people just don't think about that when we think of nonprofits, like all, especially within the arts organizations, it's, it's a lot of work to write grants and oh. file your taxes and all. And it's like, you can't payroll, yeah. like uh, <laughs> insurance, contracts. And to me, I'm more of an artist's mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I work a lot hands-on and teaching and whatever, but it's, I can't just, oh, I can I know. just you know, I know. write these grants now and manage money. It's like, no, I need a little bit of education yeah. on that to really <laughs> be successful yeah. in what I want to do. So. That makes sense. So what, so what do you mean the gallery you run? What are you talking about? Um, well, I run a small project space in downtown Mankato called the 410 Project. It's a volunteer-managed community space. We offer exhibitions and workshops and classes, and we do a lot of community outreach 
Um, we're all run by a volunteer. Wow. So, and we've been open since 2003. What? Mm -hmm. Have you been doing it, doing that since 2003? You? No. Okay. 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 <laughs> sorry. But I mean, come on. I just want to know, like, that's a long well, time. It's, wow. it's, it started in 2003 just by uh, three MSU students who were graduating. They wanted a place off campus to make and show their work that wasn't like in an academic setting. Mm -hmm. So they just pulled their money together and rented out a storefront downtown. <gasps> and it, it. kind of, they turned it into a gallery and it at first was just kind of like showing MSU students and stuff. And throughout the years, it's just been handed down from artist to artist. Mm -hmm. And I started just volunteering there in 2009, um, just worked up the chain to where then it was like passed down the torch mm -hmm. type thing. And I've been doing that since 2011. Are you in a lead position there? Are you like, a, you're like running the deal? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Well, of course you are. You have a master's in nonprofit administration and art. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah, so, so when it comes to like exhibitions and all our workshops, programming, financials, I do all of that stuff. Wow, that's so impressive. So how many exhibitions do you have per year? Well, about, about oh gosh, I'd have to do math. We have 20, one in 24. 20, 20, I mean, it's once every two weeks. And, I two mean, and a half weeks, yeah. There's a couple of those like really small Once every two weeks? Oh, yeah, yeah it's we, a fast turnaround quick. there. Yeah. <gasps> But there's oh a God. lot, there is a lot of demand for it, mm -hmm. too. I mean... Um, Michael, how do you know anything about this? Oh. Michael was my first show. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, that's kind of the that history. I was responsible for. So, <laughs> he I was mean, 18. Yeah, what? I mean, it's really quick. Like, okay, so I showed up to MSU my first year of undergrad in art. And um, even before starting, I was like, I, I want a solo show. So I went down to the 410 Project. You were 18 years old, and you were like, I want a solo show? Well, yeah, I'd been I like, I was like obsessed with the movie Pollock, uh, you know, with, with Ed Harris in it. And like... <laughs> I was so into like that romantic idea of like the the, the alcoholic, slightly insane mm -hmm. artist having a solo show. And that's I, a know, real thing. It yeah. was like it was like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like the pinnacle of my life as an eighteen year old. I was like, I want a solo show. So then I went down there and I thought it was gonna be like really hard. You I went had, down to the four ten project. Yeah. Okay. I went down How there. did you know about it? Where did you hear of it? Um I walked in there one day. Okay. I saw the art. I <laughs> All really, right. I really just walked right in downtown. there and um one of the longtime volunteers, Kurt Germanson, who is also an art history professor, was working there. And he's like this real, like, burly, yeti looking guy. And he's kind of dirty and like, <laughs> but he's like the most amazing guy. And I was like, I kind of want a solo show. And he's like, okay, well, here's the email. And, and then all of a sudden, he's I like, had... write to Dana. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, and so then um, I got the solo show. And I was like a painter at that time, doing really bad abstract painting. And I had just started my program in ceramics. So, like, there was that summer. It was planned a year in advance, and I just, you know, worked my ass off and, mm -hmm. and had the solo show in August, and it really kind of, like, kick-started me. It really, wow. like, it really put me in this position where, like, oh, I had to put, like, on a shirt and tie and exhibit my work and consider exhibitions and, mm -hmm. you know, all those little logistical things as an artist that y you don't really think about that it got me thinking, like, instantly, and it really kind of hit my, like, my love and romance for it, like, right away off the bat. So, I mean, the 410 is, like, huge to man, Kate. I don't think she really kind of fluffs it up as to as, as much as it really deserves. No, but... I mean, I'm, like, freaking out. Like, I think I might hop in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, it, I mean, we have a city of 60,000 people, and it, it's pretty, um, I mean, it's, it's you know, there's Starbucks, there's, it's it's very kind of Rochester-y, it's, it's primarily white working class. There isn't a lot of culture in Mankato, but... In the past few years, Dana's really been able to make the 410 like a arts hub. hub yeah. at, whereas we have a couple other galleries, but if you want to go see something new, if you want to see something fresh, if you want to like be involved in the arts in Mankato, you go to the 410 project. Do you have to be from Mankato? No. Whoa. No, our current show right now is by a MFA candidate at MCAD, Nick Rivers. Mm -hmm. So we have people from outside of our region that show. How do you select? Um, normally it's, we try and get a mix. We can't obviously, well, no space can accept everyone, but we try and get a mix of community people, but also, um, people that are bringing in new ideas of display or installation or performance film. So we try and, I don't know, it kind of just depends on who applies and yeah. mixing it up as much as we yeah. can. And it's like, we know I've been working there for so long. I know the demographic that walks in that door mm -hmm. and suiting like kind of like suiting the work to the needs of the community that's yeah. absorbing it yeah and that's always a factor with anything but it's like okay what can we show people like what different things can we show people and what are the other spaces in the town showing and so how are we going to contrast them but work together 
you know, so that can be that yeah. can be awfully challenging. It's very challenging. <laughs> well, I know. And the Four Ten is branded as as an experimental space. It's art gallery and experimental space, and it really holds true to that. If you have an idea that you haven't done before, you don't have the facilities or you don't have the wall space to try something new. Mm-hmm. I'd say Dana and the Four Ten are very open to experimenting and, and trying something new. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't understand how you, artists. I don't understand how you do a show every two weeks. How on? What, what is going on with that? Like, that's like, you're making me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how well, do you do it? Because originally they were a month, and then when I took over, it was just like, we could be getting more people in the door. Whoa. And that's what it's about. And if you, like Michael said, there is a demand for people to exhibit their work, and um, not just through solo shows, but group shows, community shows, special projects. And I was like, well, it's a little bit more work, but. If it's, it's there, more people. Then do it. Yeah, it's more people. So who installs everything? Um, the artist is responsible for installing their work because that's important to have that knowledge. There's dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so like, do you have any? I mean, you can't name names, but like, do you have? Has that come back to bite you ever? No, really. Well, it's like we're there to assist them, and there are times where we have installed. Yeah, People's you've just work. been like, oh my God, this person doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, it's, or some people get nervous and, <laughs> or it's, things are complicated. Lots of artists don't know how to hang their work. It's kind of incredible. Gotta, like, it's, yeah. it's very common. And you know what? I'm not saying this from a place of like, you should know how to hang your work mm-hmm. at all. Like, you should know how to do your art. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it's true that those skills, I, you know what? So I'm going to admit something here mm-hmm. on the Joan of Art podcast. I don't know how to hang art. Does anybody know that? No. no. Wow. Right? <laughs> But I know how to I know how to get people who do know how yeah. to that's, be excited about it. That's doing it. a huge skill set. <laughs> well, and on the opposite end too, there's a lot of artists who don't really understand the limits of a studio or of a gallery. Right. Um, whereas I can always think of one where me and Dana were talking and an artist wanted to just attach cotton candy to a wall. Uh, like just stick like, a full with wall. a staple gun or what? I'm trying uh, to like, think about like, it. Like on like sticky, wire. Right? Or on wire. With mounts? And, and no, just like just stick it because it is sticky, but it, you know, oh, it's sugar, it's food product. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's going to attract like a hell of a lot of flies. And it's like, you know, you can't really. And it's really... cotton candy. It's, yeah, it's it cotton candy. It will exactly. dissolve. You know? And we work with them to be like, okay, you know, because. Well, we but are... you could make that. And it wouldn't have to be cotton candy, right? Exactly. And that's, you know, you have a lot of student artists coming down with these really, like, bold, ambitious ideas, mm-hmm. but they're not totally thought out. So, I mean, Dana's really good at also educating them and limiting them so that we have that two-week turnaround, or they have that two-week turnaround, and the gallery doesn't burn down, you know? Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Or that it yeah. just doesn't become this, like, mess of a wall. I mean, it's, right. you yes. know, it, it's almost always been maintained at this really great, pristine level. And a lot of the community's support is, like, people coming in to paint the walls, repaint the walls, and work with the space to really keep it as our own community hub, which yeah. is, yeah, mm-hmm. excellent. So so you have to pay rent to the person who owns the building, and you Correct. get that from, do you get, like, Minnesota State Arts Board support? Sorry to ask you all these, like, I'm just so fascinated oh, no, right like now. It. We get, okay. um, we run off of donations from the community. What? So that's how we sustain. We don't have a large bank account, but... Are you serious? Enough to sustain. Yeah, and we and I write smaller grants <sighs> so to uh, the Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council, which is the arts council for our region. Um, but all of that money goes straight to our programming, so we can have classes for the children and adults and workshops for the community. So, um, do you gonna are you gonna hit MSAB up? Are you a nonprofit? Is it a nonprofit? Well, we're technically not nonprofit uh, status. That's okay. an issue, but right. we do have fiscal sponsorship to where we are able to apply for grants. Okay, that um, makes sense. But it's one of those things that's on like our radar of like, okay, making the step to go to that higher level. Yeah, it's big, it's big but and it's scary. You got to make sure you have that commitment. Yeah. Do you, you want know? this to be your life forever? Yeah. Do you? And I don't know. <laughs> I'm at a weird stage right now. I'm like, ah. Well, you're doing an yeah. amazing job and you've Thank been you. at it for a while. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I totally can appreciate that. It's like, mm, do I want to get married or do I want to keep dating? Like, yeah, basically. <laughs> right, right? Yep. And no, it, that makes a lot of sense. And it's, I, I love Mankato. I'm, both Michael and I, I think, are really spoiled by that community. So it's, you know. Is it hard? To, do you fantasize about leaving? Sometimes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's such a strange relationship I have with uh, Mankato and the Mankato Arts. And in one way, it's like there's opportunity. Um, if you're, yeah, if, you uh, can be a big fish in a small pond, right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing is that the opportunity is out there, and there are a lot of people who want arts programming that Dana offers or, or, or a lot of like either arts leadership or arts consultation. Um, 
there's a lot of it there, but at the same time, it is, you know, it can be a small bowl. I mean, we come up to Minneapolis and there's all these like amazing institutions. Like, like we were talking about the soap factory, Suvac. I mean, I mm. all these like really, really just beautiful institutions that have amazing exhibitions. And it's like, mm. God, why am I not here? And like, well, I mean, you know, it's like, I think you guys both are finding spaces to be here and be there oh, yeah. at the mm -hmm. same time. Like, yep. and you're, and you're also like, Michael, you're doing stuff here mm -hmm. and other places too mm -hmm. right like pilot mound oh god <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that can be dedicated to a couple hours of talking shout about the out pilot to carl Unash. hey carl hi carl <laughs> i know we both love very much but yeah we will talk about that yeah you know what i think we're gonna do wyatt are you down hello my engineer wyatt everybody applause, wow, mm -hmm. applause. <laughs> We are going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to continue talking to Dana Sikla and Michael Semino about all of the cool things that they're doing in Mankato and the Twin Cities. Uh, we will be right back. Stay tuned, Joan of Art Podcast mm. listeners. The term foodie can sometimes come across as a tickle pretentious. BT and Lydia are here to demystify the term and reclaim it for the sake of good food. Their weekly podcast brings in fellow foodies and culture creators from the Twin Cities to talk about all things food. Find this duo only on the Alive and Social Network. Just when you thought it was safe to go back online, along comes this hit show. Do you want to do this? I will do this. Okay, yeah, baby, let's not battle our kids. No, I was, no. Oh, Bill, I, you're, you're being nice. Yeah. In a world full of hit shows, this one's the real deal. So I'm refusing to engage you. in an argument that I'm doesn't exist. I'm not arguing. <laughs> Twin Cities hit show. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey, see, I, this I, is how fights start on yeah. pedal pubs. This is exactly. exactly <laughs> he's just all he's that, all that, all that redheaded Hug anger just came up. It's I, all in his I, chest I, right I, now. I the Twin Cities Hit Show airs live daily, 9.30 to 10.30, on the Alive and Social Network. Oh, Maybe Shannon, her. welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness, Francis Gum, normal people, you guys. I love that song. I'm sorry, I could play that like on repeat for hours. Um, all right, well, we're back. Hey, thanks for being here today, Joan of Art podcast listeners. We are having a really super good time talking to Dana Sikola and Michael Semino, who are made the trek up to the big mini apple big city. <laughs> <laughs> from Mankato and are telling me all about this 410 project. Like, we, I think we've been focusing on that a lot. Um, Dana, I want to talk to you a little bit more because mm -hmm. you're freaking me out with your mad skills. <laughs> I'm really impressed. I am. You, you know, it's cool. So, but the other thing that I'm like, okay, so you've got your master's in nonprofit arts administration and art, and you are running this gallery and you're flipping shows every two weeks and, and you're still making your own art. How does that even happen? I am super, <laughs> super lucky to have <laughs> Nice time management skills. Um, <laughs> They're nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give those a little bit of credit. Um, I'm lucky right now because I'm not working. Okay. I'm, I've worked very hard for years working full-time jobs and trying to do my art and the gallery and, and stuff like that. But now as I'm getting to a little bit of a point in my career to where I can sustain off of the projects I'm doing, this summer I did an artist residency in Fergus Falls through Springboard for the Arts that I... And they paid nice. you. They and paid. You were cool. Yeah. It's, All right. It is a reality. Hey, let's tip the hat to Springboard. Way yeah. to go. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Cool. That was a really great opportunity. And since then, I um, had written some grants that I received some funding for, and then the Made Here project as well. And um, so I think 
really just focusing on the artwork itself and try not to get bogged down with you know the you must reality do you, have, do you have cheap rent yes <laughs> <laughs> another reason to stay in mankato mm -hmm. for sure yes. oh, yeah. right yeah, yeah of i live course. in a very nice neighborhood in a nice house and um single and i got no kids you have I a, dog? a dog oh who is my life i knew but, it but um yeah so i just have i have the time and i it's really important for me to write right now to like bite because mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of really good opportunities one right after the other. And, and you have to keep, you got to, like, once you jump into the vortex, like, you got to keep it going, keep going, right? Yeah. Yep. So I'm like, it's probably going to end sometime soon. And I remember when I was in my earlier mid-20s, it's, you work so hard and nothing comes out of it. I know. And you're making work and you're making It's kind no of money. incredible, right? Mm -hmm. Although, Michael, this isn't the case for you. No. But <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> for Dana and He's I. a rarity, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're gonna make me fly. I know. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. You just you work yourself to death mm -hmm. and it's like you kind of like it's everything sort of feels like it's not moving. Yeah. Like there's no movement. Yep. And it was like that. I think every artist goes through stages of that and the whole idea of once you graduate, if you continue with your art practices and it was just something I knew, you know, it's like, okay, I'm gonna do this and I just have to keep applying for things, keep writing grants and now it's where I can just focus within my arts practice. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I would think, I mean, honestly, the 410 project to me sounds like a full-time job. It Plus. definitely could be, yeah, I would say pretty close to a full-time job. Do you feel like you don't, I mean, I'm okay. I'm going to ask the hard questions now. Do you feel like you give the 410 project everything it needs? Or do you think, do you think that they're like, if you, if you weren't dating it and you were married to it, mm -hmm. do you think you would like totally dig in more so? Oh yeah. Yeah. I would, I would think so. It's, I can only give so much of myself to that space and we do have a an amazing group of volunteers but it's only you know ranging there's like eight volunteers that run the whole thing but i do a pretty big chunk of a lot of it so it's you know it's like what do you want to give your energy and your heart to yeah. it's like i have to give a lot of energy to my work and you know i make these large installations that takes a lot of time yeah. to compose and install and do site visits and you know and i do a lot of other things too and I work with the city of Mankato a lot with arts programming and um, I'm on some boards and oh yeah wow that's well that makes sense I mean I'm feeling inspired because like one I mean I identify as an artist too but mm -hmm. have I made anything in a thousand years no because I'm so obsessed with helping artists and I think like my um you know my my career as a nurse mm -hmm. and how it translated into the creative sphere is like oh help artists help artists but oh man i i really do want to sit down and embroider some shit and i want to like make, <laughs> i miss i miss making yeah. window displays mm -hmm. like i i that is a really fun thing to do so how do you feel about having a window in the made here project i gotta ask like what do you think about it i am super excited that's when working in installation you kind of gotta like you know obviously the space is a huge factor to the work and it can be very frustrating sometimes and with working with paper paper has a tendency over time to take on the space like the air and the temperatures and humidity so i'm always like oh god where are they going to put my artwork and especially do you like where i put you i love it i think it's a it's weird little cave yeah i know it's, it's like <laughs> it's a, a little special. diorama it's special oh. Honestly. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I really, that space is, you know what, I love all my spaces, mm -hmm. but, like, that space is, like, it was all, co like, covered in, we call it Carol paper, mm -hmm. after Tim Carroll, who, like, uses tar paper mm -hmm. with a lot of stuff that he does, and so, like, it's been, that tar paper has been up in, like, this black mm -hmm. little space. You know, it used to be a massage place. Oh. Isn't that weird? So like, uh, you know, and it only fit, I mean, it would only fit like, it's so small. So what is it? I don't know the measurements, but it's I like, don't remember. it's, it's like tiny. 10 foot by like 12 foot yeah. or something. It's like Not ideal. even. It's like windows, small. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it screams and so. Wait a second, it was a massage parlor that was 10 feet by 12? Well, it wasn't a massage parlor. It was just oh. like a one person one. doing oh, massage. Oh, right, 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 yeah. But the weird part about it for me is like, so you would basically be in the Skyway getting a massage. And people could see you. And yeah. But I guess, is that normal? I don't know. Some I mean, people you might like that. Well, yeah, and there's also those <laughs> massage chairs at malls where you can just <laughs> sit right. in them, yeah. and you're sitting in the middle of a mall, oh. and it's just like massaging right. and vibrating. You know right. what I mean? Like, maybe there's just no boundaries when it comes to a massage. I don't no, know. I don't know. I guess maybe it's just like, you know, it's on the spectrum. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the, anyway, the thing that I love about that space, though, is like, so made here is all installation, so much installation mm -hmm. art, which is really exciting, because I think sometimes it's hard to find those opportunities. It's very difficult. Yeah. But um, we also are limited. Like, mm -hmm. we have so many spaces that, like, 
uh, really suit an installation mm -hmm. and then we don't and everybody wants to do installs yeah. like they all want to and so we have a lot of opportunities that are like taped to glass mm -hmm. to or like you know hanging 2d work like Property managers are fickle. Mm. Like some of them are like, that's cool, Joan. Yeah, I don't care that you're creating in wheelbarrows full of broken glass. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> and then other ones are like, I have to see. I mean, I'm going to send it to this person and this person and this person. And it can only be this and this and this. And so um, I think installations are really special and they really suit the Made Here project. And I mm -hmm. think your work is going to be fantastic part of the show. Thank you. Um, yeah, but, I'm really excited. So let me ask you about that too. Like, in installation art it's fine it's hard to find homes for that right yeah it's very difficult and it's again it's one of those things once you get a little bit of credibility and you get things like macy's on your resume people are like oh oh maybe you can that. actually do this yeah. you you're know? that kind of artist. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know but it's like i went into grad school and i was a printmaker and that's kind of and then i transitioned into installation um with using printmaking as a medium for it but it was kind of like oh i'm interested in doing this and spaces are like uh, it's a little too big or it's a little too much time commitment that they had to give to me to actually like to install. I'm like, right. I can't install in like four hours. It takes two days. Right. And there's like, Fair. we can't give you that time. So, but now I think installation is becoming a lot more popular mm -hmm. now too, versus even just a couple of years ago. So galleries who, which are maybe more, a little bit more traditional are opening the idea yeah. of it. I think it's, you know, insulation is a big commitment for a space. It is. But and it's like how do you sell sell that, right? Yeah. A book or prints? Yeah, or I, I sell you, individual prints within the work within the installation. Yeah. Yeah, and on the other side, I mean, like you were saying, I mean, a lot of it comes down to getting people in the door, especially with yeah. nonprofits. I mean, a lot of it does go by headcount sometimes in mm -hmm. my very light understanding of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but I think a lot of galleries, even we're seeing it in southern Minnesota, they're really noticing the draw to it. They're noticing that installation art has a little bit more of an entertainment factor, mm -hmm. I think. Right, yep. totally. Um, and it brings people in. You know, it's it's a it's a one-time opportunity to see something. And whereas, um, you know, you can see a painting in three different galleries, and it, in some regards will still be the same painting, right? But an installation, no matter where you go, you have to respond to that space. So there's a little bit more uh, drama. Mm -hmm. you know? There's a lot think, more drama. There's a, yeah, there's a space in Mankato called the Carnegie Art Center, which is like, it's the old public library. It's super traditional, carpeted floors, beige walls. Wow. It's got some really old styling to it. I mean, it's... it's in other words, it's extremely inspiring. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I love the place. I, I personally love the place. Um, but they actually came to me um, a couple of months ago, like, we're looking for an installation. I'm like, but it's, I mean, it's a historical building even. I mean, there's limitations to it, but even really traditional galleries are starting to see the allure to it. So yeah. I think it's, I mean, yeah, installation has been going on forever, but, or for at least decades. But I think now even the, the little bit more rural yeah. galleries. Mm -hmm. um, like appreciating and embracing it. Yep. Yeah, I think so. Do you guys have favorites? Do you have any favorite installation artists that you like? I'm putting you on the spot. I'll tell you mine. <laughs> you know, know, like I always go back. I know. I, 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 you mentioned Tim, and I always go back to Tim's tar paper and Tim's the cell factory. Tim's tar paper was it, cool. It was the it was like one of the first installations I ever saw. Me it, too. I really, mean, here. Well, I was it, just like I was. I was brand I was new, new in town. To yeah. The town. Yeah, I was new. And I walked in and I looked at. I'm like, what the? And it was hell cold. Is this? Yeah, Remember oh, it was yeah. cold. Oh yeah. It was yeah. terrible. Oh yeah. The place. It's it so was cold drafting. in there, but yeah. he was like, ah. He was just bearing down, just drawing, pushing through that whole thing. And I was like, like this is ridiculous. Or I mean. Um, Chris Larson's work, especially, I mean, if we're going to Minnesota base, it's just. We're going to keep talking about Soap Factory. Yeah, yeah, it's I know, like, I oh know, my God, it's Andy Doucette. Andy Doucette. Uh, who like, brings a VW bus oh into a gallery? God. Who does anything that he who did? Who brings like a lifetime of National Geographic or the I football know. team? Were you there? Yes, I was there. Did you go yes. through the football team? Yes. Oh my God, that was so awesome. <laughs> I like freaked out. I was like, I've never, I've never played football. I'm never ever going to play football on a team, but this is exactly I what I wanted out of it. I sat on an air plane yeah, seriously like, <laughs> i know it's so ridiculous <laughs> that was really 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 yeah. really exciting and you know what it's you know what it's okay it's in the air right now about the soap factory right it's okay for us to celebrate it it's yeah like, exactly oh my god oh my god oh my mm -hmm. god don't everybody freak out but hey but man, please, maybe yeah. something's going yeah. on we, like, figure it out. 
we got to care. Yeah, we got to care too. Yeah, know? we do. And I think and mm-hmm. I think that part of that caring is enjoying the what we've enjoyed, you know, mm-hmm. and thinking and talking and storytelling, right? So yeah. we can do that. Yeah. So all right. Well, okay. Uh, shake it off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of another installation artist that I love in the Twin Cities is Venus de Mars. Oh. <laughs> Venus been around forever. Her like, performance work is just. Venus drove a fucking car into Blocky, like as a part of her show. Really? Like, yeah. So the Rifle Sport Gallery was yeah. used to be E Block, you know, and she like wanted to be a part of this exhibition, but they didn't have any gallery space for her, mm-hmm. so she was like. Well, what if I just do the staircase or whatever? I, there's a Joan of Art podcast episode. I'm sorry, I, I can't think of it right now where Venus tells this story. But she basically drove her art car like up the staircase. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like oh that was her God. install. <laughs> I know. Uh. <laughs> like what point do you get to where you could do stuff like that? It's like, it's okay. I, but, but it's you like, know, I think that there's something to be said about like alternative spaces mm-hmm. and like non traditional places, right? That say yep. like, Sure, drive a car in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, sure, you know, sure, drive. Yeah, you can put half of a gutted out airplane in here. Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, and it also, I mean, the context of it too it really opens up to different installations, different fields from. Um, I did an internship at the soap factory my sophomore year of my undergraduate, and I worked with the Flower Project, which was. Um, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. I remember that it too. It was the, the ceramic bombs that were formed with uh, flower seed in them. And I mean, it's a factory atmosphere, and we were a factory. We right. were just producing these that World was War One bombs. That was super bombs. cool. Yeah, and it's like, you know, that was perfect. I mean, if we did that in a white gallery space, and they did do it in a white gallery space in Chicago um, prior to coming to Minneapolis with it. But it adds that context. It adds that almost like theatrical feel to it that this might be real. You know, mm-hmm. we kind right. of, we built a factory in there in an old factory building. It was right. it was wonderful. Yeah, it was a kind of a great play on the whole idea, right? And oh, like yeah. suddenly there you are. Yeah, we had the jumpsuits on the wall and everything. That was yeah, that was oh, a lot I bet of fun. That was super good time. Mm-hmm. I wish I would have been a part of some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I did at the soap factory? I did the haunted basement. Oh, did you? Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like one of the first things that I did in town. Honestly, like I was mm-hmm. doing storefronts for Smitten Kitten and some other businesses mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and then I got approached to do the haunted basement, and Lisa Lee Polivka, who's a really good friend of mine, was the mm-hmm. costume designer there, and she was kind of thinking that maybe I'd help her with the costumes, and I was like, dude, no, mm-hmm. like I want to do an installation, <laughs> and you know what I did? I made my family's living room circa 1970. Oh, that's so <laughs> cool! That was so crazy. It was really crazy. Look it up, you guys. Yeah. Joan Vorderberg and Soap Factory Haunted Basement 2011. <laughs> it's a pretty funny project, and mm-hmm. people still talk about it. But I, you know, and it, it was all volunteer, and I thought, and you know, it's kind of touches back to the 410 project too like when I participated in that I was like hey it kind of sucks that I'm not getting paid but I was like I am going to meet so many Mm -hmm. important people who are going to be a part of my trajectory Mm -hmm. you know and I still to this day like some of my made here installers were you know, I met them at Haunted Basement, like, mm-hmm. and they are working for me now. Like, that's really exciting. But yeah, it's, it's sometimes crazy to think, you know, and it's without the 410, like, it, the space when I was younger and wanting to, like, go into more of, like, a professional aspect of being an artist versus just making the work, um, the 410 is what gave me my first solo show. It taught me how to really act and to write about my work and discuss it and present it and so now the ball is in my court and I want to give that same thing back to other people so when we have you know more emerging or artists who are wanting to experiment more you know like Michael or whatever it's like they can come in and they have a space to do that because I'm an installation artist like we just talked it's hard to find places especially in a rural community that are going to let you paint the wall and hang from the ceiling and put sand on the floor and all this. It's like, it's more work for me. And I know I'm like, Oh my God, why am I doing this? But (laughs) to support those people is really what it's all about to expand the next step in their career. Cause without spaces like us, you know, we're limiting the community and the arts. Yeah. So I mean, girl, like I, (laughs) I'm doing this maneuver, Joan of Art podcast (laughs) listeners, that thing where you point to your own eyeballs with two fingers. And the other person, yeah, we are we are right there we're together with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. she stands up to it too. I mean, I put seven hundred nails into uh, one wall what? last, last mm-hmm. December, and they let me. Yeah, uh, I did an insta- <laughs> I did an installation where I hung um, like right around three hundred um, architectural decorative corbels. You know, you see them on the side of buildings, and I'm like, I'm like obsessed with like classical architecture. But I wanted to put them upside down, and they weren't balancing, so I had to put two nails in for every single one, and like it was just pounding nails, pounding nails, pounding mm-hmm. nails, and like I Swiss cheesed the wall completely. But they was trusted me. Was that a me. Zen experience? 
Um, no. When you were I, hanging it, I just kept, I just kept hitting my thumb and was getting. Oh, really oh no! Oh no! <laughs> yeah. But Dana, were you watching this all unfold and you're like, "What the fuck, Michael?" No, he well, him and I have a relationship to where I can trust him. You know, a lot of times, not anyone just comes in. They're like, "I want to do this," and I'm like, "Yeah, sure." They have to be trustworthy, and of we do work with them, and right. you know. Obviously, Michael and I have a history to where I know he's completely capable of doing something like that and not destroying the space or taking advantage. And it's like, yeah, I have people that check in and out. Normally, we're pretty there. We're there the whole time with the artist, but there are rarities where... It's nice. I mean, I ha obviously have that experience, too, mm -hmm. where it's like some people, we need, you know, five others to oh, yeah. help. And then yep. there are other people where it's like it would be um, a, offensive to help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just such yeah. a, everybody's in a different place, you know, and I'm, I'm really also happy to work with people who are very experienced, but also mm -hmm. give opportunities to people who aren't. Oh, totally. Like, it's so important, and it's really lucky that we have that opportunity. Like, mm -hmm. I think you, I'm getting the feeling that you're passionate about the opportunity mm -hmm. that exists with the 410 Project and that you know that it's, like, a vital part of the arts community in Mankato. Yeah, it's, I don't know, I think it's so weird because we're project space, so it's like we could close any time and downtown is becoming really commercialized and we're this little space in the middle of the block that's, our building's not the best looking and whatnot, but it's it's really important to, you know, the children that come in and take classes or the adults or the young artists and the experience that they're getting, so I, it's like, okay, I have to keep moving forward. Yeah. And yep. there's some days I'm just like, ah. Yeah, you need a nap. But <laughs> it's sure. so. Well, okay, I want to get the website, and then I'm going to super pick on Michael because <laughs> we've got like 20 minutes mm -hmm. left. So what is the website for the 410 Project? The uh, website for the 410 is the410project.com. Uh, you can go on there. It has our We have a couple different promo videos, our exhibition schedules, um, class things. So Or find us on Facebook, 410 Project. We put most stuff on there because it's easiest for me because, again, I'm not very... Yeah, I do no. the website, and I'm like, oh, this is way over yeah. my head. You don't have a digital uh, content strategist on on board. <laughs> no, we haven't gotten. I haven't seduced anyone yet to do that role. All right. Well, hey, maybe if anybody's listening, you feel hey. like jumping in, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Dana. So, Michael, I'm picking on you. All right, I'm ready. I know. I mean, we've. I'm really glad that you've been a part of this whole conversation because you're obviously very embedded in the stuff that Dana's doing, which is really cool. But okay, so I'm just gonna out you. You're 23. 23. What the hell? Well, I'm 24 in January, so it's coming oh, up. Oh, so yeah. you're still talking like that. Still... You're still wanting to be <laughs> I know, older. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I still want my independence. Are you 23 and three quarters? <laughs> I yeah. still got, I got about this much teen angst still in me, or about that much. I'm not oh, sure yet. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Hang on to that, man. I mean, I still have some of that. Yeah. I'm 42, so what the hell. Yeah. But okay, so at 18, you get your first solo show. And yeah. I really love your comment about how, like, you put on a suit... You know, you took it seriously. Oh, yeah. And it, like you, you knew that like it was a big deal, but you also reached out and grabbed it for yeah. yourself, mm -hmm. which yeah. I think is like not everybody does that. What, what the hell is it about you that you do that? I thought it was. And that was the weirdest thing. It's like, okay, so um, about three weeks before I started uh, college, I wanted to be a narcotics officer because I wanted to bust meth labs, right? And Why? Then, what? Because I wanted to bust meth labs. He likes and, you know, power trip. Yeah, I'm a power trip. Oh, yeah. okay. Right, so I go on a ride along because my mom was a probation officer. So I go on a ride along oh and we all we do is we pull over one kid for weed and um, and then we investigated a, a Taco Bell that had been broken into. So I was kind of like, all right, that career choice is out. You're like, this is not yeah. movie worthy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then, and then um, but I had always done art. My mom, especially my mom, was like, it always put me through art and it was always a part of my life. I had an entire unfinished basement to myself to just go <gasps> wild with. Is your mom an artist? Uh, she, yes. I mean, she's always been a drawer. She's always been a painter. Okay. Um, she, you know. And she gave you the basement? Yeah, she gave me the basement. I think she just wanted me out of the hair. But, you know. Yeah, but so, hey. I stayed out of trouble, you know. Downstairs. It kept me from, like, just doing, like, dumbass teenage things. I was wow. just always in the basement, like, painting or working or, or just fooling around. And then, um, I never really considered it as a career option. But then, like, I, for some reason, it clicked in my head. I was like, all right, cool, I'll be an art major. And I thought everybody like was like applying for shows. I thought everybody was like 
going after opportunities to show and exhibit their work and actually make a living as an artist. But then I got there and it was just kind of like a lot of people just like dicking around in the studio. You know what's yeah. interesting though? <laughs> like, oh my God, I, I wish that that were the real, that, I wish Me that too. that were I, I still, what I, it is. Like that you, you, I'm an artist and I want to show. Yeah, exactly. And that's like, what I did. As I, and I walked in the gallery and I was like, all right, I want to, I want to show and I don't want a group show. I mean, I, I want I, my I, own I want my show. Own show. I don't want to share space. Cause I, you know, I was like, it was never about like, oh, I can't do this or all oh, my work isn't good enough. I knew my work was going to suck in the beginning, but it's good experience. You yeah. Know? You knew um, you needed to learn, but you also wanted to be bold. So there's mm-hmm. something about stuff that you do. That's pretty got like a, it's pretty bold, right? I try. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Okay. So then you had that exhibit and then you're going to college, right? I'm going to college, undergraduate, okay. um, internship at the soap factory my sophomore year which was like an incredibly good experience that got me out of the academic art world and i think there's a very very sharp um divide between academic art and kind of the real reality of what you'll be doing as an mm-hmm. artist oh yeah um, slap in the face yeah there. so uh, yeah <laughs> exactly so yeah. i got that really early on and i had that, i had that understanding that 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 academic art and being a student artist is very much different from actually um, either making art for a living or being a facilitator of the arts for a living. Um, So I was always searching for other opportunities out in the world, um, in the art world of around Minnesota that would allow me to get that other side of the education, the real education. The real like Mm -hmm. life hands on. Yeah. I had the studio to go back to that. I could work on my own stuff that would be free of judgment. And if I didn't want to show or do anything with it, I didn't have to, it was cool. Right. But then I always put myself on the line to show my work, to work with other artists, to work under artists, um, and to try and collaborate and just get as well-rounded of an education as possible. Well, that's how I met you. I met you at Carl Unash's Compound. <laughs> I don't know what is he called. Oh, uh, the, the artist, name? artist haven. Artist haven. The artist okay. haven at Pilot Mound, Minnesota. Yeah. Um, so Pilot- I met you. you it was, I don't even remember when was. It must that been was a year? two summers ago. Two now. summers ago. Yeah. Okay. All right. So like a thousand years ago. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I had just I had just finished up my BFA and graduated, and I had nothing really planned that summer. It was either I get a part time job and hang out in Mankato, and um, I saw the opportunity and I called Carl and I was like, I'm uh, interested in coming out and, and working for you. And I was like, do you want any images of your work? And he's like, I don't really give a good goddamn about your work. Just come out here and talk to me. So I and get some shit yeah. done, boy. So, yeah. So I, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, I drive down two and a half hours, get there and it's in deep Southeastern Minnesota and bluff country. It's just beautiful there. Um, and it, when I got there for the interview, he was burning down a shed and I'm like, that's okay. kind of cool. Yeah. So then we go in the studio and, you know, it's covered in glass and it's like, it, it's, it's really, um, it's a really beautiful romantic place. Um, but he, uh, I'd say Carl was my, my, my father in the arts. He taught me basically everything that I really still hold true to this day about why I make art and, um, not just for myself, but who I make art for mm-hmm. and, and, and really what's art's role in surrounding not only, metropolitan communities but rural communities what is the role of an artist and what does your what is your purpose um and he really taught me that firsthand and that was probably the most um well yeah focal experience of like developing as an artist yeah he has he he's really done a spell put a spell on me too yeah, <laughs> like, I, and I, I didn't get to work as closely with him as you have obviously but we're good friends and um just his um his theory about like art being a vector for empathy and mm-hmm. connection and like his, his passion for wanting to share that with rural communities. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. it's been, it's been a kind of a, a, dif- a difficult road because he gets like all these awesome gigs and I know he's really appreciative of it, but he's also got some projects that he really wants to do. And it's just, it's hard to find homes for them. You know, well, and he's, I mean, he's, he is hands on the most ambitious person that totally. I've ever met. His vision goes totally. beyond most people's imaginations combined. Um, I agree. And I mean, that holds true for the apprentice program as well. I mean, I'm just going to spend like 20 seconds on it. But I mean, he took me in green. I mean, I really didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a a career path. I didn't really I didn't have that understanding of what it really meant to be an artist. You know, in, in an academic studio, you're told you can get an MFA and teach or you can make art and no one really gives you an answer after that, you know, right. Especially in our program. I'm not saying, um, I love MSU's art program. They're extremely free. They're extremely open and non-judgmental, And I've really had a great time learning there. Um, but Carl supplemented the actual real career knowledge mm-hmm. that I needed. Um, and he just, tr- it's on trust. You live with the guy. Um, you yeah. share meals with him. You go where he goes, you become friends with his friends. He puts you 
fully immersed in his life and his, his life as an artist as a working his life, artist right and it's not you know it's but it's also his life as a human being right you know what i mean it's, right. it's very strange in many ways i think the apprentices who come down there are for that short bit of time a little bit of of sort of his children you know he's yeah. teaching he's totally he's giving you everything that he's learned and has fought for right and gives you every bit that he can and i'm yeah extremely gracious for it but yeah yeah after after working with carl for that first summer i kind of left um spellbound and like ready um i felt really confident mm -hmm. so um yeah this is where i'm at right now just finishing up graduate school and, and still working with carl a little bit i worked with him last summer and, and starting to kind of go off on my own now didn't you just make a mural this week well i didn't make it um <laughs> you got like a uh, shit ton of spray cans in yeah. your car, yeah, okay, right? Okay. So, um, I, one of the great things that Carl taught me to segue out of this is that um, if all I do is hang around art kids, I'm never going to get work because what does another mm -hmm. artist really need from you? So that's true. And mm -hmm. it's also um, being emphatic of other groups and getting re branching out into other groups that you know you may not be comfortable with and seeing what they need from you. So I kind of, I mean. Carl is, you know, in biker country. He, um, he's really kind of in a little bit of that, that, that a little bit, for lack of a better word, um, redneck atmosphere. Yeah. And I felt really comfortable around it after working for a while, rather than just being around art kids. So I started going into biker bars, um, <laughs> and I started talking with Vietnam War vets. Um, I started talking with veterans. A lot of, um, a lot of that blue collar demographic that comes into these sort of towny biker bars. And we formulated an idea to go to the American Legion, get a bunch of veterans together. I will plan, stage, and facilitate a mural, and they will paint it. Um, what? Yeah. I didn't, I bear very little painted that mural. Um, you gotta be kidding me. Well, and the other thing was that. Where, where, where? Uh, Eagle Lake, Minnesota. It's five minutes east of, of Mankato. It's this tiny little town of so about. So veterans painted this mural that yes. you coordinated? Yes. Um, so oh my God. I coordinated it with uh, Leah Langdon, who is part of the MSU Veterans Club, which is our campus veterans club. And she helps coordinate and get the wall space and get the city approval. And I kind of focused on the art end. So I had to figure out how to make it work, how to, um, how can just anybody who's really never even considered a mural paint a mural? Um, and at the same time, the Legion had a demand or had a desire to bring in a younger crowd. So I decided to go with spray paint stencil, um, stencil and spray paint. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's something that anybody can readily do. I cut the stencils. I did the computer work to make the images into renders on Illustrator and print them off in large scale. Um, but once that was done, it was it was showing up, showing them how to use them, and showing how to set up the stencils, and, and letting them do it. Um, and were they into it? Were they excited? Were the, they... Be, the beginning was rough, um, to be honest. I mean, um, I think when people stare at forty feet of of a brown wall that has really nothing done to it, it's hard for them to just kind of pick up a can and hey, just start. Hey, st starting anything is horrifying, exactly. and they're not even like. There's nothing in their real house right. yeah. so, for this. Yeah. And, you know, I grabbed a, a couple cans and I just started throwing lines down. I was like, what do you think about this? You know, what do you think about this? And we just started painting on the wall. And then another guy was like, well, what if we expand the red down? And then as soon as that one guy shared <gasps> When they opinion, started to do that, I know. It's like, oh, my God. As, and that's the thing is that, I mean, it's a, it's a brotherhood. It's a camaraderie. So if one of them does it, they start to feel a little bit more comfortable with each other, just with any other, You're uh, any shepherding other group of people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. group. So yeah. once that one started to lead it off with an idea, then everybody was like, well, let's do this. Let's do this. And then the cans were grabbed and it just started. And we had five hours to do 40 feet with five stencils. Um, and uh, you had five hours, five hours, 12 to five. Cause wait a minute, was, Michael, you knew that that was kind of crazy, right? Oh yeah. But I mean, <laughs> I am I am a student to Carl Unish. <laughs> well, <laughs> crazy, we talked about we, crazy is just not something that's in my vocabulary I know, anymore. I know, right? And you know what? We talked before the show started when we were chatting. We talked about bending time, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It's a thing, Joan of Art podcast listener. Yeah. It's like artists can bend time. Yep. <laughs> but I mean, we had we had fifteen people, um, fifteen people that's readily cool. painting at right. any time. So that's like fifty five or whatever. That, like that's way more hours mm -hmm. if you think about the manpower. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we, gotcha. it was possible, and that's that's all I ever really need is like, is it possible? Yeah. All right, let's do it. It'll well, and you know what? It's like, yeah. And we probably can all identify mm -hmm. with this. You know what? Yeah. I'm probably biting off more than I can chew with whatever it is mm -hmm. that I'm right. doing, but you know what? I'm not afraid to fail. Either. But it's also, you know, and so then you don't, and then you don't. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, wow. You're like, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you believe in it, you know, and yeah. that's, um, I really believe in bringing art in a, in a broad general term to much more into 
like blue, like blue collar areas that we can brighten up a community with. Murals are perfect for this. You mm-hmm. can brighten up a community with it. Murals can, are impactful. Mm-hmm. You can bring yeah, people together who maybe aren't so comfortable with making art. And if I can make them feel comfortable doing it, or if I can give them like, like, hey, let's just do this for a day. And if they like it, well, then you know what? Maybe they might go off and do something on their own. Mm-hmm. And they, they at least have that little moment. Or where, inspires like, them to. Where they're at, you know, you're, paint, you're painting on their third space, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, exactly. And so, like, you, you know, they can look at that for years to come and feel like, oh, I, I helped make that. Yeah. I mean, that's really special. And the outpouring of support from the community from it and the, the pride that I saw yesterday after we had finished the job and, like, the excitement that they had and ready to do it again in the spring, um... It was it was really incredibly heartwarming. It was something that like made me feel like I've you know been working for a long time for that moment to where I am actually able to you know add to a community or mm-hmm. add to a a little bit of a lifestyle and and maybe not the word inspire but you know encourage a little bit of creation in like these kind of ruler Rural, smaller yeah. communities. Yeah, I mean I think that's what I really believe in in making art for. So um, on that side of the practice, but then there's you know my academic studies and all that stuff in art too. But yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's incredibly special. I think, you know, Hey, this is why I freaking love artists because yeah. I feel like the impact that they're able to make in for people mm-hmm. is like so incredible. I mean, just got a different set of eyes, you know? And yeah. I think it's really important. Like with Michael's a really good example. It's, you know, even when you're young and like age is never really a factor within the arts, but it's like getting out there into the community and seeing what your opportunities are and working with people and figuring out ways how you can contribute to the community within the arts. Cause that's how I think like you can really learn and grow mm-hmm. just sitting in a classroom and making something and the buck stops there. It's just, it's just not as rewarding. And- well, but then there is the argument that like, hey, like artists should be able to just make art in their damn studios and not like be like, you know, there's yeah. there's a room for everyone, right? Exactly. You know, oh, yeah. right, of course. But I mean, I do respect the fact that mm-hmm. like there should be a space for artists to just have a studio mm-hmm. practice and be successful at that. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know? Um and I mean, I yeah, I have so much of a like a love for just getting in the studio mm-hmm. and just like either like casting clay or just sculpting. I mean, that's that's how I was you know born and raised in mm-hmm. this. Um, but when you're able to use your you know your creative training, your creative skills to to work with other people who don't have those skills and make something really cool for a community, mm-hmm. it kind of supersedes a little bit of that of that selfish and self, selfish not in a bad way, but like that selfish practice of just making art. You know it what I mean? It feels freaking awesome right it, does, <laughs> it just yeah. feels really right? good i mean, I mean I you know. can totally understand i mean when yeah. you when you take like how many people are you using for made here 60 60 mm-hmm. 60 different and 20 insta- students yeah and 20 <laughs> oh, students man. look yeah. at all that opportunity of new artwork that just pops up and then it goes mm-hmm. down and then there's new stuff yeah. coming up i mean that's ridiculous but i mean that's facilitating culture in a way well and you know my learning curve like i'm all about like I want this to benefit these people who have this creative spirit and who mm-hmm. have this vision and who, who have an idea and make the sidewalk a nicer space for the people who are walking down the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. And I want everyone to be able to experience creativity mm-hmm. and whatever. And where I had to like really learn quickly is like, how do you pay for that? How do you pay for that? Yeah. How do you pay yeah. for that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Who's going to fund it? Who's going to fund the materials all the time? How do you pay for that? Like, and I, you know, at the beginning, at the start of my very, no, it's been, I've been doing Made Here for two years. Like, I really didn't know about it so much so that when I thought about it, it made me cry. I would mm-hmm. cry. I'd be like, why would anyone care? Yeah. Why would anyone give me money to help artists? Like, <laughs> I'm so miserable. Yeah. But it's. But you find it, right? Oh, yeah. my gosh. I didn't know that. Neither yeah. did I. You yeah, know? I didn't know. You never really know how willing people are to be like, you know what? That's a good idea. Let's, you know, let's, let's brighten do up it. the space. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I mean, know. that's what I'm starting to just kind of start to break the surface of a little bit is like if you just talk to people and yep. you just mm-hmm. kind of communicate strategize with them, yeah. strategize just like who does this make sense for right. i don't know yeah i factor. mean you're not selling them snake oil you give them like a real product yeah. like an honest <laughs> right. thing that can honestly like like give them 
a, a, a better community, you right. know, uh, something a little bit more pride in the community or a little bit more color, a little bit more a, a, a destination, yeah, a spark, exactly. a place of inspiration, mm -hmm. something to be proud of, an icon. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, sure, it's so. a little we're kind of over dramatized. I know, here, right? it's <laughs> I, like, know I could go on forever, but, but at the same yeah, time, it's like, yeah, I'm still like, I'm still running high off of yesterday from just like, you just how finished much it yesterday. It, That's yeah, so well, cool. we started it yesterday too, but yeah. <laughs> And then I just, you know, the week prior was um, was doing performances with Jaime Carrera. Right. So, I mean, I was going from this, me and Jaime did this performance. It was, you know, completely bizarre based on, like, the Catholic sacraments of the Eucharist. And going from that to, like, doing a patriotic <laughs> mural were, like, two totally opposite ends. And, like, I was barely finding the right gear yeah. by yesterday for it. But um, You did it, though. Yeah, we did and it. And it was successful. Yeah, and it's just, like, one of those... I think that's what I'm like really here to do, you know. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> well done, you know. You. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, do we do can you share anything online that but where can people find your stuff? Um, well, I, my personal work is um, Michael M I C H A E L hyphen Semino C I M I N O dot com. Um, that's all my personal sculptures, um, public commissions and private commissions. Um, yeah, if you want to see something kind of funny, there's like um, there's a bunch of chocolate Jesuses that I did for an Easter commission that are uh, that's on that page. Um, I think you're gonna be back on this show. Can we we haven't even touched the surface here. What the fuck is? Oh that? yeah, we haven't even <laughs> talked about we haven't even talked about Jesus. No, yet. I haven't uh, even talked I got about boxes God. Of, I got yeah. boxes in my studio, with thousands of Jesus, and yeah, we never. I've got a lot of Jesus. I'll be around. <laughs> yeah, if you want me to come up, I can I can bring some uh, I can bring some Jesus popsicles. Go I got some us. I got some Jesus ice in my freezer right now. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, that's great. Well, thanks, yeah, Michael. This has been really fun yeah. to talk to you. Dana, do you have any other websites to share? Any stuff coming up or anything? Um, like you had said, this Friday I'm installing um, part of the Made Here project. And I currently also have an installation up at the University of Minnesota on the St. Paul campus. Um, and you can find my artwork at danasicla.com or find me on Facebook. It's pretty easy. You just... I've, I'm not like Michael, where you type in Google and um, other things come up. <laughs> you can uh, go online and you can find me pretty easy. All right. And Sikla is spelled S-I-K-K-I-L-A. Yes. Awesome. You guys, this was like such an awesome show. Exactly. Thanks, Great. everybody, yeah, for this listening. Was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> we will be back next week mm. with more <laughs> artists as we investigate and celebrate people who make art. Thanks to the Live and Social Network. And thanks to our engineer, Wyatt. Mm. Thanks, Wyatt. All right, Joan of Art podcast listeners, we'll see you next week. I hope everybody has an awesome day. Thanks, Dan and Michael. Thank you. Thanks. Dear sir, dear madam, dear sir.